Hey guys, today we're going to be doing a bit of infrastructure as code using CloudFormation. Let's start with why should you learn infrastructure as code? Apart from it being a very valuable skill set in the marketplace, it's very important because it gives you a consistent infrastructure landscape with no manual changes. If you're just clicking through the console doing lots of manual undocumented changes, there's no way to know what's going on. If somebody accidentally terminates one of your servers, you've got no way to recreate that easily. Whereas if everything's in code, you can easily tear things down and recreate them within an instant. You can hook it into a CI CD pipeline so that everything's automated. And you can also go back and see who made what changes and how that relates to different projects and JIRA tasks that are being worked on. So with that being said, let's jump into creating our first CloudFormation template. When you're starting with CloudFormation, you have a choice between using JSON or YAML files. Now, personally, I prefer YAML because it's human readable and it's just a lot easier to see what's going on. So for the purposes of this tutorial, that's what we're gonna do. Open up your favorite text editor. You can use anything, Notepad, Notepad++. I personally prefer Visual Studio Code because there are a lot of great extensions that you can use. So we'll go ahead and create a new file, give it a name, .yaml extension. Now, when you are creating a CloudFormation template, there are certain sections that are very important. Whenever you create a template, you always have to specify this template version. This is like a placeholder thing that AWS has in case they change the format of how they want you to do things later on. A description, it's just brief description of what this CloudFormation stack is going to be. For us, it's just a demo example. And then you have a resources section. Now there are also parameter sections and output sections, but we're gonna just keep it extremely simple for now. So we're gonna go ahead and create a resource section. Now, because we're using a YAML file, these spacings between here, or these tabs, sorry, are very important. If I add an extra tab or an extra space between there, things will break. So you have to be um, very, not cautious, but just keep that in mind that every indentation is very important. Now we are creating a CloudWatch log group because that's by far one of the easiest um, resources to create. There are very little things that you have to define. So this will be enough to spin up our log group. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll open up the console, head over to CloudFormation. Oops, if I can spell correctly, that would help. Click on create stack with new resources. We're going to upload a template, choose a file and navigate to that file you created. Click on next, uh, YouTube demo, give it a name. And just go next, 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 and create stack. And congratulations, you have just done your first infrastructure as code. And as you can see in the CloudFormation section, this is that stack that we've created. And in here, you've got different sections. So you can see what's happening. As you can see, it's uh, created. And if you head over to events, it gives you the timestamp of when things were created, when they get deleted or updated. If you head over to resources, it'll show you the log group and you can actually click on it and it'll open up the specific resource that you created for you. Uh, there you go. We can see our example log group is up and running. We don't need that anymore. So we're going to go ahead and hit delete. Now that will delete every resource that we had within our file. So it's gonna go ahead and create, uh, delete our log group for us. Awesome, so that was the simplest resource that we could create. Now we're gonna go ahead and spin up an EC2 instance, which is just a server running in AWS. And it looks a little bigger, don't freak out. We will talk through each line. Straight away, you'll notice I've added a parameters section where you can specify certain parameters to use later in your resources. So if you have a look at instance type, you can see we're referring to it down here. And what you can actually do is there's a special command called exclamation ref, where you can then refer back to the value that you specified in your parameters. So what we're saying here under properties is for our EC2 instance, I wanna set my instance type to this parameter that we've set through this code. And you can see, again, we're doing it for image ID, security groups as well. Uh, something important to note, you can split your parameters out into a different file. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm keeping everything in the one section just to make life easy for you. Another cool thing you can do when you are spinning up an EC2 instance, you have to specify an image ID. Now these change 
every couple of months, especially if you're using the AWS provided images. What you can do is specify a very particular type of parameter value where you are just pointing to a SSM parameter store value that AWS has. So by using this default value, it will always get the latest Linux Amy for us. So in theory, this um, CloudFormation template will work today. It'll work six months from now, 12 months, years from now. So we don't have to go and manually update anything, which will be good. So if we have a look at the resources section, we're creating an EC2 instance, and we are also creating a security group, which we are attaching to the EC2 instance in this line. Let's go back to the console and see what that looks like when we run it. Again, we'll go create stack, upload a template, uh, EC2 example, uh, EC2 example. And you can see because we are specifying parameters, we have the option to update and change these. Um, I'm gonna leave them as defaults for now, but just keep that in mind that you can change it through the console later on. Uh, go with the default and create stack. While we wait for that to create, something I wanna to touch on is tags. You can set certain tags when you create your CloudFormation resources. And this is incredibly handy, especially in a working environment where you may wanna put certain tags to particular cost centers, areas of the business, or maybe particular projects that you're working on. Okay, we can see that it's created. And if we head over to resources, we can see we've got our EC2 instance and also that security group. Let's head back to our code base. Over here, you can see we've got a type, AWS EC2 instance. If we chuck that into Google, we can get the documentation and see all of the parameters and values that we can set. So you don't have to remember these off the top of your head. Uh, the documentation is quite good. And as you can see, it's got JSON and YAML examples. And if you click on any of the kind of properties that you can set, it will give you additional information on how to set it, the type of value it needs, and if it's required. So quite a lot of these are not required, they're optional. And that's why I don't have like hundreds of properties set in here. I've only got the bare minimum. The documentation here is great. As you can see, it's got every service available. So for example, if you wanted to, I don't know, learn more about DynamoDB and spinning up resources through CloudFormation, you've got the type here and you've got a list of all the properties that you can set and how to do that in CloudFormation. So far, we've spun up two individual stacks, one for a log group and one for an EC2 instance and its security group. We've done this through the console clicking around, but let's do this through the CLI. When you start working professionally, chances are you're gonna be running scripts and having everything automated through pipelines. So you really should be doing this through the CLI rather than kind of clicking through the console. Okay, so we'll open up our terminal and this is the command that we want. AWS CloudFormation create stack. We will give it a name. I will do demo from CLI. Then we also need to pass through the file that we created. So for us, it will be ec2.example.yaml and hit enter. And we get this kind of output, which lets us know that it is creating the stack for us. So if we head back over to our console, go to CloudFormation, we can see we've got our demo from CLI and it is now creating. I highly, highly encourage you guys to start using the CLI to create your stacks that way rather than the console, especially when you start splitting out your own parameters into their own files or like values, it just makes it so much easier when you can script everything. So to recap, we have created our first ever CloudFormation template. We've deployed our resources. We've done it both through the console and the CLI. If you want to learn more, just start reading through the documentation and creating certain resources use parameters, try to add tags, split them out into different files and see how it all hangs together. If you really want to learn more and dive deep into cloud infrastructure and infrastructure as code, I highly recommend you check out this project, Scepter or Spectre, I can never pronounce it properly, but it is a great way to structure your cloud formation templates and it makes it really easy to deploy resources across different AWS accounts, regions, environments, 
have the different cloud formation stacks rely and um, talk to each other, kind of like the dependency between certain stacks. Um, this is how I do this professionally in my nine to five job. Um, but it is a bit more involved and complicated. If you guys are really interested in diving deep into it, let me know and I'll just make a video on it. Another cool infrastructure as code project you should check out is Terraform. Now, CloudFormation is AWS native. Terraform allows, Terraform is slightly different. It uses the AWS API directly, but also by using Terraform, you can spin up resources across AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, um, highly highly recommend this one this is another industry standard as well to follow i forgot to mention if you want any of the source code to the templates that we created in this video i'll leave a link in the description down below to a public github repo with all the tutorials and examples for you to copy as you please so i hope you enjoyed that if you have any questions or ideas of future videos you'd like to see please let me know in the comments down below and until then i will catch you in the next one bye